Are you hunting for an alternative to Zapier? I recently got an email from Zapier telling me about a huge price increase that they're doing and I felt like this is just the final straw. It's time for me to walk away and find a different platform to do my automation on. Well, that is exactly what I'm gonna be covering inside this video. So if that's of interest, stick around and let's get into it. Welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, my name is Gareth and I'm the owner at Gap Consulting, where we make it our mission to help you get organized and automated with no-code tools. At the forefront of no-code is no-code automation and that's exactly what we're talking about in today's video. But before I actually hop into the heart of it, I want to invite you to join me for my automation training. If you haven't really fully leveraged the power of no-code automation, this training is gonna teach you the fundamentals behind automation. Doesn't matter what platform you use in order to build your automations, and you're going to understand the basic building blocks so that you can start automating the repetitive tasks in your life. If that's of interest, check that out at garethpronovost.com slash webinar dash registration. But without further ado, let's hop into the heart of this video. We've got to talk about switching out of Zapier. So if you're like me, you might have received this email from Zapier not too long ago talking about new price hikes that they are announcing. And it's been true that Zapier has been getting progressively more expensive over the years, but this one just really took me by surprise. Effectively, they're telling me that the $40 plan that I was on previously is no longer gonna work for me. Uh, it's a legacy plan, they're no longer supporting it, and I'm gonna have to buy a new plan that's around $150 a month, and that's even with a discount that Zapier is including, a 20% off for the first year. And this is just such a price hike from Zapier, and Yes, I wanna be supportive and I understand that prices go up over time, but this seems like price gouging. And so for me, it's time to abandon ship and I am looking at Make, formerly Integramat, as the alternative platform where I'm headed next. But before we talk about Make, I wanna just briefly look at the plans that Zapier is now offering. These plans are three to four times more expensive than they were when I started using the tool years ago. Uh, we have the starter plan starting at 30 bucks a month and this only gives you 750 tasks. Now a task in Zapier is that thing that's actually getting automated. It's an action step inside of your Zapier automations. And so this doesn't buy you all that much. 750 tasks is not that much. In fact, the current plan that I would need to upgrade to if I wanted to keep all of my Zaps running would be at 5,000 tasks a month. And of course I tend to use this a lot for a small business owner because this is what we do day in and day out. But still, this should give you a gauge as to how much you'll be spending. It used to be that we were spending $20, $30 a month for Zapier, and now that price has increased up to $130 a month. So if this resonates with you, you will probably also, like me, be looking for an alternative to your Zapier automations. And the obvious choice here is Make, formerly known as Integramat. So making the switch over to Make doesn't have to be all that difficult, but it will help if you understand some key fundamental building blocks of Make that are different from Zapier, at least at first glance. Now, if you haven't already signed up for Make, formerly Integramat, please consider using our affiliate link. This is a great way for you to show some love back to the channel and encourage us to keep making these videos. I'll go ahead and drop that link below in the description and the comments of this video. So if you find this video helpful, please consider using that link as a way to show your gratitude. So let's go ahead and hop on into a number of different things between these two platforms to make your migration from Zapier over to Make, the more affordable automation choice, that much easier. So the first of these items is the understanding of how the different pieces inside of automations work in the two platforms. Inside of Zapier, when we build an automation, it breaks it down for us like this. It says, what is the trigger that's going to start this event? And so when we're establishing that trigger, we then pick what software we wanna to watch to be the thing that turns this automation on. And then following that, we have the actions. And so every action that we build is where we're actually going to see the automation itself, the things that the automation performs. Well, Make follows similar rules, similar building blocks. We still have a trigger to our automations, which is followed by actions. But the difference is in Make, when we go ahead and add a new piece to this, it's called a module. And so when we add a module to Make, let's say we were adding Airtable here, 
If I wanted to bring this in, it's going to tell me the different actions and triggers that are possible with Airtable. So it doesn't hold our hand when we start building an automation. It doesn't hold our hand and tell us, hey, you have to start with the trigger. And so it's up to us to understand when we're building inside of Make that we need to establish a trigger first in our automation that leads into action steps. So this is a big difference here. Again, Zapier is great in the sense that it has training wheels on it for new people building automation for the first time and Make is for the slightly intermediate user. So if you've been building automation for some time, this will come very easily to you. Just know that you're not going to be prompted for a trigger. You have to find the trigger out of this list, which in the case of Airtable, we can watch records or watch responses. But obviously, we're not going to trigger an automation by searching or getting a record or creating a record. So again, some familiarity here in terms of automation is going to benefit you just notice that you are not prompted directly for that trigger and you need to find it for yourself. Now that's gonna take us to our second big difference and that's how we get charged for the different things that happen inside of our automation tool. So in Zapier, we're only charged for these automation actions. So we never get charged in Zapier for the trigger. The trigger might go out and look at Airtable to see if a new record meets conditions, for example. Only if it finds something in the trigger does it then initiate the automation and then we get charged for it as we move on through the automation. That is not true for make. The key difference in make is that we are going to be charged for an operation every time our trigger goes out and looks for information. And so this is the key difference in the way that the two softwares work. If we go ahead and build a make trigger here, let's again use Airtable as our example, we could say something like watch records. And we could build this up so that it's watching records in a particular base based on certain conditions, and it would go out and look to see if those conditions were met. Well, the takeaway here is that we can establish the frequency of that search. And if we set this to be something like every minute, well then 60 times in an hour, we're gonna be charged for an operation that's going out and looking for something even if it doesn't find something. So the key takeaway here is that you have to be very mindful about how you establish your triggers inside of Make. If you're gonna do something like watching a record, in this case, you're looking for something, you go in and search for it on a given interval, you have to be really thoughtful about that because it's gonna chew through a lot of operations even if it's not finding something. And this is a feature that we're unaccustomed to if we're transitioning from Zapier because again, Zapier goes out and looks for that information and doesn't charge us for tasks. So just be mindful about the way that you're building your triggers inside of Make. There are other options that would probably be better in most scenarios. Going after this same example that I just established with an Airtable here, we can do a watch response to Airtable and actually set up a hook, which is going to be much better because this is only going to initiate when the hook itself comes out, when the hook is given new information. So it will not go searching for things unnecessarily. So in this particular case, you'll notice that that clock icon has been taken away here and replaced with a run scenario immediately. And this is an indication inside of Make that this trigger is only going to initiate when there's something to initiate on. So this is gonna take a little bit of getting used to as you transition from Zapier to Make, but you're going to find it really, really helpful once you fully master this particular new feature. Now, just a quick reminder, if you haven't already signed up for Make, we have an affiliate link that we are sharing below in the description of the video. So if you want to follow along as we cover more of these points in Make, uh, go ahead and grab your free Make account there and start tinkering with it. Uh, and that's a great way for you to show some love back to the channel and uh, give us some thanks for having put these videos together. Now that takes us to a third key difference in the way that these tools operate, and that has to do with pathing. You're actually going to love the way that pathing works inside of Make as compared to Zapier. Inside of Zapier, if you wanna build some conditional logic inside of your automation, what you'll do is actually come down to your action and you have to add the path. And inside of the path, you can establish some different rules. You can say, if something happens, certain conditions are met, then I want you to take this path. And then you can establish a different path as well. Uh, switch over to path B, for example, and say, well, if other conditions are met, we're gonna go a different route and go through path B. This is really cumbersome to navigate. You have to add this pathing at the very end of an automation and it gets pretty nasty when you're getting in there and 
having to add multiple paths. You can have a path inside of a path and it, it's just overwhelming and unnecessarily complex. And this is why you're going to love Make because they make it so simple to do more complex pathing like that. Now, in order to access pathing for Make, you're gonna need to access the flow control tools at the bottom of your screen. And so simply go in here and you can look for some different options. These are all of your different Make specific operators that are gonna help you build more efficient automations. Things like rolling back, iterating, array aggregator. A lot of these are on the more advanced side, but pathing isn't that complicated. You can bring in a router here and include it inside of your automation, which is going to then create different paths. And the amazing part about this is it's so easy to go in and modify compared to Zapier in terms of modifying that path. Now, we actually apply the filter in a different way inside of Make as well. Inside of Zapier, on the path itself, we were establishing that filter inside of the pathing, while inside of Make, we do it on the actual path. So if on path A, we wanted to do something based on certain conditions here, we need to set up what that path is by applying a filter inside of that path. So we can say things like, only continue on this path if certain conditions are met, and that is all established right here. We have all of our operators on that particular dropdown. We can set what we want the operator to be equal to and build our condition accordingly. So Make is very similar to Zapier in terms of the setup of this, except for the fact that it's so much easier to use this UI, and it's also easier to visualize the automation as it comes together because you can zoom out click and drag it around and get as much of it or as little of it on your screen at once as you're working in the automation. Now, another area where you might struggle as you transition from Zapier is Zapier's connectivity to apps is the best in the business. Zapier has built so many direct integrations with so many other software tools. I believe there are currently over three or 3,500 different connections with tools. Well, Make is still playing catch up a little bit in that regard, so it doesn't have the same high number of direct integrations with other platforms. But don't allow that to bring you any despair because Make has actually allowed us to create some custom code and this way we can interact with any software that has an open API. So chances are good if you're accustomed to Zapier having a conversation directly with the software that you use and then you're trying to switch over to Make and you don't exactly find that software, well, that software must have an open API, otherwise Zapier couldn't have connected to it in the first place. So this really means that you'll probably just need a little bit more customization as you build out your Make integration and as you transition, but you can still do it. We can add code very easily inside of Make, drop in some webhooks as a way to create a quick webhook response, and there are a number of other ways that we can build direct integrations as well with tools just using some custom code. So if you don't find the exact application, the exact software that you're looking for inside of Make, don't take that as a sign that you just can't do it. You can still build an automation with Make, you just need to know how to get access to that API. And this takes me to my final thought on transitioning from Zapier over to Make, and that is the fact that this is an excellent case study if you don't feel personally confident in making all of those transfers yourself and recreating your automations from Zapier over to Make, well, this is a great opportunity for you to bring in a low-level consultant who's not going to be terribly expensive in order to help you make this transition. So here on my screen, I'm sharing the actual make section for professional service requests, and we'll share this under this video as well. And I wanna point out that this is an awesome case study specifically for junior consultants. So you as a business owner might think, ah, of course Gareth is gonna try to pitch me on some consulting services here, but I'm not necessarily recommending that you hire our firm to help you with this. This is entry level stuff because a lot of folks who are just getting started in this space, maybe hire a freelancer, it's gonna be a lot easier for them to do this work and it will cost less in the long run for you 
number one, you'll pay $100 or so a month less in software costs, so making the transition makes sense. So if you look for a junior developer, the reason I recommend a junior consultant here is because of the fact that they won't need to do any of the hard thinking themselves. They're just transferring an existing automation to another automation, and it's giving them an opportunity to really work inside of Make and build up their portfolio. It's a lot of the other work that is more difficult for consultants, speaking from experience, the kind of work where we have to actually think through the process ourselves and build it for the first time, that's not the kind of work we're talking about here. So you can start working and building a relationship with a junior developer who can start building up their portfolio all at once. So if that sounds of interest to you and you don't feel like you are ready to take on this transition yourself personally, check out the link that I'll share with this video so that you can go and see what Make makes available for us in terms of professional services and recommendations to the consulting community at large. I know we covered a lot in this video and went kind of fast, so if you have any additional questions, feel free to drop them beneath this video and I'll do my best to answer those. And of course, if you haven't already, subscribe to this channel so that you can stay up to date on no-code videos just like this one, and I will see you in the next video. As always, I hope you found this to be extremely helpful. If you did and you'd like to learn more, swing by our website to see how we can help. We offer an exclusive free training that teaches the fundamentals of no-code tools, including automation. We also have some paid services available, including advanced courses, no-code hourly consulting, as well as custom project consulting. So swing on by to get the help you need, and we look forward to connecting with you soon.